I don't think so. She seems really confident. Okay. And I'm sure it'll be fine. But I was thinking like she would really like this. Like this would be perfect for her because she loves it. Drink this cherry lime, cherry lime. <laughs> not carbonated, but that should be fine. Hey, it's me. Hey, what's up? That's good enough. It brings it's you up to negative four. Shut your fucking mouth. Oh my god, you should have been here when Chris had to fucking. I showed him the. Oh, yeah, you showed yeah, him yeah, the, yeah, clip. the clip. It was really funny. Are you? I feel like I'm constantly just putting things down and never picking them back up and a great example of this is this entire video I recorded myself talking and I don't remember any of it and I just found this untitled project in Premiere where I've already started making a video and never uploaded it. And I don't, I just don't remember any of, of these clips. Like I, I don't know if I'm having like memory issues, <laughs> um, but I just listened to myself talking and went, I don't want to put this on the internet. So I'm not. <laughs> And I'm going to skip to all the new stuff, and hopefully the new recordings that I made are good enough for me to not puke when I'm listening to it. So let's see. I have like 8,000 recordings on my phone. Huh? I have like 8,000 recordings on my phone. Oh, yeah. And I think like 90% of them are actually from making videos. Yeah, before you go to Italy, empty them out. Sarah just emptied out like 5,000 photos. Yeah, I know. I was thinking about it yesterday. Because um, like, what if I want to take videos? I'm not even going to be able to edit there because I'm not going to bring my hard drive. There's no point. Oh. Or do you think I should get a new hard drive just specifically for Italy? It's on the floor. Remember we bought it. It's right on the floor in a brown box. And it's brand new? Yeah. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> well, anyway. Now, now I'm going to go out and try to make a video. Okay. Okay, bye. Bye.
Awesome. Because it's been a long time, I have to show you my new canvas. I will talk about my Pentax for a bit. I have been using this Pentax. Um, oh God, I don't even know for how long. This is a Pentax from like 1974. See where I destroyed it right on the top, right there. My aunt gave this to me as a, like a little gift. This was her camera. It was also my mom's camera that she used for school. And I have her 35 millimeter prints that she did in a dark room. I love this camera so much. I use it so, so often to the point where I have dropped it so many times. And now the frame counter right here does not go up. So it will always stay on too. And I've taken at least 10 photos. So either this frame counter doesn't work or something on the inside is also not working. I'm hoping that comes out. So I ended up getting another present for my aunt and it's this lovely, lovely camera um, in perfect, oh, close. It's this lovely, lovely camera in perfect condition, eight millimeter. I already own a Super 8. I own a Bolex 16 millimeter camera with prime lenses. And now I own an eight millimeter UMIG camera with beautiful prime lenses that I don't know how to switch. So I'm gonna show you it. Um, and I'm gonna show you kind of like what I've learned about it and what I'm kind of like using it for. Um, but yeah, here it is. Isn't she beautiful? Oh my God. She's literally so small. I can hold her with two hands. Um, these are her beautiful, beautiful lenses. It's motorized and it's a crank motor. So this actually comes out and I crank it. And right now it's already all cranked all the way. So if I wanted to make this work, all I'd have to do is go to the back and press that. And I have no idea if that's in focus because I haven't learned how to use it yet. But there's film in here and I wish I could show you the final product, but I wanna get this video out and this is gonna take me years <laughs> to develop knowing me and uh, how I don't like to go to the lab. But it's got really cool gizmos this is for, oh God, I can't remember. I think this is the frame counter. <laughs> Can you tell I went to film school? I think this is the frame counter. And this is um, frames per second. This is whether or not I want it to be manual or um, hold it in place. So it'll just run on its own or uh, stills. So I can take photos with this. Uh, or do like a stop motion. I still haven't figured out how to move these. I have to look this up, but somehow these move. I know for a fact that they do. Um, and then I can open up the back there, but it's so beautiful. And she comes with a little, little handle and she's all mine.
people confused. Yeah, you know, I was gonna go to Images Festival tonight mm -hmm. um, for like um, a different exhibit, and um, I think I don't need to go anymore because this is probably what they would show. I just spent six minutes listening to myself talk in a video I filmed. I don't even know how long ago, actually, um, that I was supposed to make. And I kept telling myself, like, I'm going to make this video. I'm going to keep making it and it's going to happen. And it never happens because I get distracted so persistently by everything like I'm getting distracted by the go train just going off right now because nothing wants to be quiet in this area but I love myself and I love listening to myself speak I love listening to other people speak I could listen to people talk for 20 hours on end but not today so I'm going to redo everything that was said in those videos even though I don't actually remember what was in it I graduated about a year and a half ago. I'm probably overshooting that, but um, it's been a wild year. And I was so worried coming out of university thinking, oh my God, I am never going to get work. I don't have any connections. I have no idea what I'm doing. And everything was so crazy. And I think that the one thing like that people do when they finish school is like, oh it's fine like if you're anxious about school you're not confident no you're transitioning from an institution into the real world where there's no schedules and nobody to hold your hand and you know you're going out every day and meeting new people because every set you work on is different that's scary that's like like my anxiety flares <laughs> consistently when that happens and I've had a lot of practice talking to people and meeting new people all the time and I still get those moments where I feel like oh my god what the fuck is going on so when I graduated it was like the biggest catastrophe because I was going into a whole new world with a lot of different changes and at that time I didn't think that those changes were very good I thought like that a lot of stuff happening in my personal life was horrible and that I, I don't even know. I don't even know how to describe it. But I kind of just moved into this mindset of I'm not a bad person. I know what I'm doing. And I have to keep going because I want to succeed. I don't want to PA my whole life. 
And I'm sitting there as a COVID PA on my very first show as one. And I think, holy shit, I have to get out of this. So that ended. And I went to work. I totally just, I'm going to say revised my whole life. Um, one thing about university, and it's like tough to talk about, I think, is that you don't have to continue to like stay in university. You don't have to continue to be around that same group all the time. Life is so much bigger than the school you went to. There's so much more out there than the school you went to. And while it's nice meeting people from TMU and while it's nice like getting to still go to events because you know people who go to TMU, my life post-school has shifted so drastically that I don't even feel like being in school is real anymore. Um, it feels like a blur. It feels like it was a dream or like this distant, distant past that I, I'm not attached to it. So I put my foot down and I said to myself that I was going to move forward with new friends and with the knowledge that I know what the fuck to do and I have a goal. So this goal was to become a production coordinator. I wanted to start small, <laughs> to be fair. Um, I think that having huge goals is nice, but I also think that having huge goals is taxing. And when you don't meet them in a very small time frame, sometimes you feel, I don't know, pressured. That's a good word. Or um, like you lose your focus, you lose your goals. So starting small as a production coordinator was probably the best thing for me since I forget what I'm doing half the time and put things down, forget about them, and then like feel bad afterwards because I am still in the same tiny little beginning that I was three years ago. Um, I didn't want a PA anymore. I was tired. And I knew that like the number one thing I needed to do was get out. So I worked so hard with the help of such lovely people um, to get jobs. I reached out to the connections I had and those connections really hooked me up. I got my first commercial through my friend Amreen. Um, and I guess everything just kind of bounced off from there. I was getting referred stuff from her. I was um, getting more stuff from people I was meeting. Um, I met somebody at CBC who actually lives near me who got me a quick little PA gig on one of their series that you can actually find on CBC Gem. It's called The Big Series and it's pretty good. It's documentary and that's what I want to focus on. From CBC, like, I've gone to work on um, two episodes of a pilot series that Blue Ant Media is doing. I also got to work on some music videos. I got to work on, like, several other different commercials through friends and through um, people that I met on those sets. Um, I got to kind of gain experience in that way. Experience that I didn't get in university and I know that while the projects were small what just happened while the projects were small the things that I learned were huge um and I feel like I'm kind of losing my train of thought right now because I don't really want to edit this but I really pushed and I know that it's really annoying to push and push and push but I was told that's what I had to do and 
sorry to the people that I've annoyed. I love you very much. And that's why I've annoyed you for work. Um, and you've helped me immensely. And I am so proud of myself and of the people I've worked with for making super cool projects. Um, I don't even know I'm at a loss for words. I think that once I started um, really pushing and not relying on um, other people to, I guess, guide me through or like wait around, um, that's when I started moving. Um, eventually, I did get what I wanted. I'm not going to talk about it yet though, because it's not going to happen until I come back from Italy. And I don't even know if I've talked about this before. But I'm going to Italy to direct a film. It's a program. It's not like I've been contracted to make this grand film in Italy. It's like a, a place where I get to learn how to direct. And I've never done it before. Um, I guess actually done it. Um, and I'm excited. I don't know. I, I'm always at a loss for words for everything because I'm just very excited to go and there's not much that I really need to share about it. I get to make a film on 35 millimeter Kodak stock in Italy, in Sicily, in 24 hours. And I just, I think it's so cool that I'm even going. I remember when I graduated from high school, I didn't even think that I was going to do anything because I wasn't interested in anything and I was being bullied to the point where I felt like I didn't even exist. So I remember, I remember submitting my film <laughs> to Ryerson and going, oh, I'm not going to get in. It's whatever. I'm just going to have to take a year off school. And then I got in and It was weird to me because I didn't think that I was going to ever get into a film school. I barely knew anything about film. I just made something for fun um, to kind of piss somebody off that told me I could never make a film. Um, and a lot of instances like that have happened in the time that I've been in school and graduated from school. I had a guy um, tell me that the fact that I wanted to be a cinematographer was stupid because like it's not special and uh, anybody could do that and like he was getting so frustrated with me all the time. I remember being told by a girl that I was a narcissist because of literally no reasons that he was just a narcissist. Um, I remember being told that like nobody was ever going to be interested in the things I was interested in like the movies that I watched and then realized, oh my God, like other people watch these and that person's just stinky because they only watch Christopher Nolan films. And I don't even know what half of his films are or, and I haven't even seen like half of his films. Um, and I remember being told like by a guy that I went for an interview with that I was never going to get paid work because I didn't have paid work and nobody was going to pay me the rate that I wanted because of that same reason. He would literally was like, you're going to be a waitress for the next five years, probably give up on film like most of the people at your school. And then like, that's going to be it for you. I remember leaving that interview so confused as to why I even bothered going in. And then he called me back, left me a voicemail, and I didn't even respond. I ended up getting that COVID PA position for the rate that I wanted, which was $20 an hour for 10 hour days. And he wanted to pay me like 16. And I saw that again like it happened again at IMAF I remember speaking up for myself um in my last year of university against 
the bullies that were completely ruining my life. Um, and I remember... being told like straight to my face that I needed to shut up and be quiet and that my behavior from the trauma I received was so horrible that I deserved to be punished because I experienced bullying that's fucked up it seriously is you don't tell somebody who has experienced trauma through school um, and through the people at the school that they need to be quiet and not speak up for themselves because that's just that's silencing that's abuse don't don't tell people that it should not make you uncomfortable if someone speaks up for themselves they're reaching out for help help them you might not be able to do a lot but i see it happen all the time with people going oh that person was mean to you screw them i hate them blah 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 they'll do it for some people but won't do it for others and trust me that's so wrong and i know that i forgive those people who said to me to shut up and like just move on with my life and pretend like nothing happened um and that my anxiety and the behavior from my trauma response was like atrocious i like for i forgive those people but i won't forget it ever and that's okay it is totally okay because the fact that I don't forget it has now taught me to never tolerate it again. And I will never shut up. I personally love my film. And Cod Story winning achievement in production at the Image Arts Film Festival in 2022 was the weirdest experience for me because I didn't even think that it was going to happen. And I think that, you know, the fact that I won was kind of like karma in a way. Um, and even though at that time I felt very much like this film doesn't deserve this award and there's other films that deserve this award more than me. Um... I still had a soft spot for it, and I felt, like, good <laughs> having won it. I think that I don't need to be confident when I win an award. I can be shocked. I think it's so much more fun. Um, and I did think we did a good job. Now, like, I'm, I think I'm just ready to move on to another chapter of my life. Um, full of people who, like, respect me and who want to see me succeed and don't want to say nasty things to me to make me feel bad about like who I am where I've come from my culture my goals you know I think I've surrounded myself now with people who um don't put me down and who want to like help me with my projects and who are interested and who are ambitious And I think that it's nice because I've put myself in that kind of environment and it feels like all this weight that was put on me, it's just all gone. And I did that in a year. In a year. It's so exciting. I have some projects on the go. Absolutely. Um, it's going to be hard now that I have a full-time job. Um... I have no idea where the world is going to take me. I have no idea what's going to happen next. And I'm excited because I like that. I think um, I think that the one thing I've learned about myself is I'm confident enough to just be okay with 
whatever. <laughs> um, and I have a lot of time to go. I don't really have to worry about becoming a producer right away. I want to take the steps to learn. And it's, it's again, it's not like I'm not confident in myself. It's that I know my own strengths and I want to take the time to learn. I want to take the time to enjoy building a career from the bottom up um, instead of just jumping right into everything and um, being like, I want to be a producer right now. And no, I don't. <laughs> I think that's like the lovely thing about life and about having a career is that you can take your time. Um, and now that I've gotten what I wanted, I do want to take my time. Other than that, like, I've just been going out to screenings again. For a time, I didn't do that. And so I was, like, dealing with some work-life balance struggles. And now I don't care. <laughs> so I'm going to be going out to whatever the fuck I want to go out to. And I don't care who's there. And I don't care what happens. Um, because I'm allowed to live my life. <laughs> Um, and I don't have to deal with children who are above the age of 25. I also don't have to deal with insecure people anymore or jealous people. I can see that from a mile away. Jealousy is the biggest killer I've learned. It's the biggest killer of careers. It's the biggest killer of relationships. And I didn't learn that because I have a jealousy problem. I learned that because other people have jealousy problems. Um, I think it, it's, I think that the world is more fun when you're able to be happy for other people when they have things, you know, you're able to be happy with, for your friend who probably has more friends than you. And you're able to be happy for your friend who is probably more successful than you. I would probably be homeless and still proud and happy for my friends because they're my friends because my time will come and i think that that's the beauty of life is just being happy for other people and knowing that like you have your own successes to be happy about and they have their own look at the big picture don't look at Stop being so short-sighted is, I guess, what I'm trying to say. Um, I think... I think I've lived a very fruitful 22 years of a lot of learning. And I think I've had a very fruitful first year out of university. Um, and I'm excited to continue with Just Friends again. I've, I'm excited to jump into another project. I'm excited to jump into my full-time job. I'm, I'm excited to go to Italy. I'm excited to make more friends because I learned that I love to talk to people and I'm not afraid to talk to people. Um, okay, I mean, sometimes I am. I, I'm not going to lie. I do have this thing where there are certain people that give me a good energy and I want to talk to them, but there are some people, I don't know what it is, I will get so scared and clam up. And I think that's the same thing with everybody. I mean, if it's not, then okay, I guess I'm just weird. But <laughs> I I do, you know, have... I have moments. I'm not perfect, but I don't like to be scared of talking to people. I love to make new friends. I've never, never not been confident in that area. And I, I don't know. I don't know. It's just a lot of things that I've learned. And I'm happy and I'm excited. And I want to stay happy and excited for my life and for my friends' lives, and for my parents, and for my sister, and for, you know, even the people that don't like me, and 
even the people I no longer speak to. Good for them. Happy for you. Signing off. Goodbye.